and welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back to Tulwar three kingdoms we're back here now in the north of ancient china and we have to defeat or actually not we have to but we want to defeat sang yan so he's up here in the north he has some provinces here left and remember he was a vassal to liu bei and of course we can't you know destroy a vassal of our ally but um liu bei actually has liberated him so he's no longer a vassal um, and he thought that was a good idea, Sang Yan, you know, to be liberated finally. But of course, it's not a good idea. In fact, it's a terrible idea. We are just right around the corner here, um, into his into his mainland here. So he's um, got those provinces here. When I look now at the diplomacy, we can see it more clearly. So that is his remaining land, and I intend to take it, Sang Yan. There it is, and. I'm positioning my troops right now. I'm not marching right in there. So I want to position them as closely to the border here as possible. And the same goes for this army here, which is close to the livestock farm. So we need a bit more food there as well. And the livestock farm would be perfect for that. So let's wait here. And let's see what else we could do right now. I don't think we can do that much. We do have a bit of money, but not much. Let's have a look at Ying Xuan. The order is still negative, but it's um, growing. So it's increasing again, the public order. That is good. That's something we want to have. And I would also like to, to increase my food production there just a bit. So um, here, the land registry office might be a good idea. And we also can go to Hanai. So Hanai is kind of like one of our primary food production areas. And in Hanai, we could now um, increase to a small regional city. That is something though I don't want to do because it would consume even more food. So up to, let me just have a look here, six food increase consumption. And that is just something I can't do right now, even though of course um, the increase in population would be nice for my tax income. Um, nevertheless, we can't do that right now. So I could do something here with those buildings to get a bit more income there, but it's just too expensive at this point, just when a war is um, right around the corner. I don't want to spend so much money, you know. I, we never know if we need all that money to replenish our troops later down the line. That is that. And here, um, there's still some buildings here. So Taishan is... I intend to make Taishan kind of our capital in the future. So it's the trade commerce um, commerce center of, of my empire. And it is also going to be the largest city here. So right now it's a large city, but we've started the upgrade process to a small regional city. So that is very nice. That is something we definitely want to do. And something that also takes a strain on our food right there. Let's have a look at my undercover network there real quick. We do have two spies right now spying up here in Dogun. Um, and they are going to, to play a vital role then, hopefully. I, I don't know. We'll see about that in the future. So what I can do right now while I have the spies there. Let's have a look at my diplomacy there real quick. Huge in the north. And that's Dogun. So he's changed quite a lot as well. There was a woman before and then what there was um, Sang Yan or something like that. So it changed quite a lot there and he li likes us actually. So my goal right now is not of course to get um, war with him right away. So we could do something like that he actually loves us perhaps. You know, so that we're really close and the, the higher your relationship is, that the better it is, the easier it is to trade um, territories there for something else so i'm going to use my spy here now real quick to improve my relationships because dugon my spy he actually um no wait a second that can't be right all right my spy is dugon dugun and he's spying on dugun so they both have the same name yeah that's a nice coincidence but it's right they both have the same name um, but he got a court he got actually a family position there now in this in this region here so he's pretty high up there and i can say now i want to instigate a civil war that would um, trigger a civil war between those most loyal to the spy and those less satisfied with their rule strongly reinforcing your influence over the faction in the process that might be a really nice uh, thing it costs us 70 um spy points there, cover points though so quite a lot. I'm not ready for that yet. So at the moment, I want to improve my relationship with him. That costs us a bit, but we do have enough action points there anyway. And we were able to um, improve our relationship and it's now at positive. Okay, so that's something. So perhaps um, I could get um, some provinces later down the line or I could instigate a, a civil war then 
and make it a bit harder for him. And my second spider, this here, um, we can say um, empower trait. Very nice. So that improves our trait um, influence quite a bit. And with that, um, we can leave this turn now here, I think. There's nothing else that I want to do right now. And in the next turn, we're going to declare war on him and start the battle. He would be no threat to you. Right, he actually suspects something like a battle already, like a, a war de 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 declaration. So um, he wants to pay us something for a non-aggression pack, but we're not doing that. He was kind of mean to us in the, in the past. And he's a bit, he's pretty weak now, I think at least. I didn't see any bigger army anymore that he has. Only by becoming the one true emperor can you unify China under right. your And banner. we've also reached the next um, rank, so the rank of Marquis. And greetings, Marquis. Your position and influence has grown by your actions, and now you should use this to better inform and illuminate the people of China to banish the darkness and bring lasting peace. Very nice. So there we have some new court positions open now. The Grand Commandant, the Grand Excellency and a new administrator, uh, administrator there. And let's have a look at my age 12, my boy. Okay, because I want to, to get him to age uh, quickly. Very nice. So that's um, a few improvements there. And let's declare war on Sangyan. Where is he? I mean, we could actually do it just like that. Very nice, there he is. And now we can say, declare war on Sangyan. You will regret this folly. And we are now at war with him. What I can see right away is that one of my generals is not happy, probably with this decision. And we can just promote him. Give him a bit more money and he's happy again. Let's move up here with my army. So we go for his northernmost city here. Um, that is... Yan Men, and one of my armies has trebuchets. Yeah, right, this one here. Very nice. And I'm also going to keep them together there. Actually, he still has movement points, so he should be able to attack. But he's not able to do that. I wonder why. Okay, we can't do that yet, even though we have half of the action points there. My, my third army goes into this one here. Because there's only a lumber mill and a livestock farm, so I don't expect any um, resistance there in this in this area here. Just some weaker provinces. He's got a city here and a, a, another city here, so I expect that he's got some armies here at least. So I'm going to keep those together there. Let's um, end this round. An exchange, perhaps. Uh, very nice. Sao Sao is interested in a trade agreement that brings us 867 coins. Um, let's see, is there something else? No, it's pretty close, so let's just say yes. You show wisdom. Very nice, that's a trade. Right there, 862 more coins per turn. I don't see any army yet that he has. We'll, we'll wait. We'll see what happens. You can threaten factions to pressure them into agreeing to terms. However, if you misjudge their mettle and they ignore your threat... You will have no choice but to go to war with them. Yeah, that's that. And one of my generals has been cap captured there, so I'm going to pay the ransom to pay the 500 coins there. We can afford that. And with this one here, we are attacking now the livestock farm. So usually they're not very strong. Um, it would be a decisive battle already, but it, he's got lots of troops there. So I'm just saying starve out for now. So I want to keep my losses at a minimum there. And we also have those two armies now, and he can now go for this city here. That would be a decisive victory right there. Almost no troops there. And I think for now, we, we're we going to um, start the battle ourselves. So let's, let's have a battle. And let's have a siege battle at that. So the most difficult ones, I think. At least I think they're the most difficult ones. They are wretched, but not without skill. Be cautious. Because, of course, we want to see something from the game and we want to see how those siege battles play out. Especially with the tre trebuchets, I haven't used them yet. We shall stand amongst their broken corpses before long. And here we are. That's my army. And there's the 
city that we want to get and it's a pretty straightforward thing here i think so this would be the best option naturally because it's the closest to the center so we need to reach the center there um and i don't see anything else there he's got the the gate there and let's have a look at my army real quick i should have oh right this is an army without any um cavalry and we also do have some reinforcements that's over here so here we can deploy some reinforcements then down the line now let's go back here and have a look at that so we have our archers we have our infantry here we have one of our he oh, heroes i wanted to say generals there so i'm going to put those generals together here and then we're going for the no actually yeah let let's take them like that they are going forward and they're going to do a loose formation because of course being a siege battle um it's going to take a quite a quite some time for my troops to do something there and we're going to be under fire for some time there as well and yeah lose that as well and then we have the traverses here so it's going to be interesting how we can actually use them and let's have a look there we can see their uh air radius so how far they can go and they can go pretty far so that is actually enough already and here we can start the battle and now I should be able to At use last, my trebuchets without risking my um, man for now. And there it is. Going right down here at the gate. Okay, so that's going to take a bit of time. Perhaps he tries to um, come out here and destroy my trebuchets while I'm firing at them at the gates. Okay, let's go to our deployments here that we have here. But deployments in a siege, we do have a trebuchet there as well, right? Yeah. So we could take the city from behind as well. There is the gate. We have destroyed their gates. Okay, the gate, the, the front gate is already down. Let's take my troops over here. And also in a... Oh, we can't do loose formation in forests yet. Okay. Here. That should be far away. Let's have a look there real quick. Oh, yeah, close. Let's make it like that. Very nice. Let's go over there again. So by now the gate is destroyed. Um, can we do something else here? Can we, like, fire down them? Let's have a look at that. And fire. Oh, they need to go forward. Then let's give, go for the arrow tower there, because um, we need to destroy as much as possible first. And that should be possible, right? Let's speed it up a bit, because it takes a bit of time there. And this tower now hopefully gets some damage there. While I'm shooting at it. Doesn't seem to take any damage, though. The walls take damage there, but not the tower yet. It doesn't seem to do any... Oh, there it is. Yeah, one of their walls crumbles there again. And we still have enough there, though, for that tower. So we're firing on it. 53 damage now. Very nice. The next tower is down. And what I also want to do is um, shoot at the wall where the archers are. There. So that the wall collapses with the archers on board. Very nice. The that does a bit, bit of damage there on their army right there. And I think that's it so far. We don't need to do very much else. Um, except actually just charge. You know, so we could go forward now. And let's do that. Let's take all our armies that we have there. Except the trebuchets, of course. And move them forward. In a loose formation, of course. And, yeah, I don't expect any flanking here, but let's keep our generals there for now. That should do it. Very nice. The next uh, wall crumbles there. And I don't think that I will need the reinforcement there. 
but let's just take my trebuchet there and fire at the gatehouse. That should be possible right away, so I can have another assault from the other side, just in case. Okay, that's my army now. Going forward there. Well, let's just take my archers here right away and shoot at there. Or infantry there. Infantry would be nice too. While well, my infantry goes in here from several sides now. So they can rush now. And there's the shooting now. We do have some cavalry there. Let's run into with our cavalry. So we can attack the infantry from behind. And there's the close combat battle now. Right, there's my infantry. Coming in just like that. There's not much resistance here though. And let's just rush into those archers there. The next gates are destroyed. I'm sending in the next infantry now. And those archers can come a bit closer there. We have captured their tower. Right, those men are fleeing already. There's the archer here. And my uh, cavalry rushes into that ar archery for a very decisive thrust. That was that. Let's rush my uh, cavalry over there and then we can have another go at those archers that are shooting down at me. There's the cavalry coming in now on those archers there. Okay, let's take those archers there. They need to be quicker and move them in here. Very nice. Before my cavalry actually arrived. Now I'm going to rush my cavalry over there. So they can flank the archers over there while my infantry goes in for a full rush there and my archers are still shooting at something there oh yeah still something like that the other gate here is open now as far as i can see that it's open so i could send them in but i don't think that i will need them the enemy unit flees what coward there's my next cavalry now and they come in here from this side Using the last last attack that we have here, probably. Because the rest is gone. So here's another smaller skirmish. My infantry against theirs. While my cavalry is coming now from this side. The archers have seen me. That's going to be some minor deaths over there. Casualties on my side. Yeah, and there's my cavalry rushing into the arches. And then I'm going to say cavalry have another thruster at the spearmen from behind. So they don't even know that I'm there. They're very, way too busy there with my... Just like that. So now they're attacking from both sides. The enemy warriors are running. <laughs> and it's over with that victory. That was rather easy, but it is a siege after all. Let's keep play and decisive victory. I've lost quite a few men, but not not too many, you know. So that's that. Took us nine minutes there, but I speed it up a bit, so that shouldn't be the problem. Um, let's have a look how many lo men are lost actually. Heaven. Only two hundred. Very nice. There was very, very little there. Let's this occupy that city. Take the spoils. 
and this is ours now very nice so my army needs to needs another turn for replenishment i think very nice so that's that we have two, almost two more provinces there so he's going to take the farmlands probably in the next turn and then we go for the lumber yard over there and here we can take the city and then the tool maker so the city is going to be the hardest one another siege right what we can also do in the meantime is we can put some people uh into our court so we have one more ad administrator we do have quite some characters here let's see what else we could have so someone that is pretty good at administrating stuff he's old though that's not an option i don't want to pay so much for old old people there he's 21 that's okay he's a spy more or less that's a bandit he looks pretty good. 49 though. Minus 5 corruption. His authority and cunning. That's pretty good for administrating. Someone with a special um, assignment perhaps. That would also be nice. Well, not the best characters here. Construction time minus 2. She's 53 though. No, that's too old. Let's not do that. Right, let's go for Grand Commandant. So we do have our um, employed as a general. Okay, so if I take them, they are going to lose that. We have quite a few generals here. And what is that doing here, actually? Commander-in-Chief. Okay. And the Grand Excellency for the Treasury and Overseas de Development Projects. And they're very important for new quests. So that is something that I could do. But I, I want to wait another turn or something for more candidates to come in. I don't like the options that we have there right now. And let me have a look at my money. It's at 9,000. Hmm. Do I want to do something there? Let's have a look. Public Academy. This would give us 200 income for culture and 25,000 population growth. And this is 15% income from all sources. That's better, I think. Now, let's take the Academy of Poetry here that we can build. And Taishan, my favorite town. So, Taishan actually is a, a regional city now, a big one. We could now go in for a regional city. It's a small regional city now, okay, so that we, we have an, another building. Um, available here and when we look at the income so it has 2.1k in commerce or commerce right for the trade port there so um, let's see if we can boost that somehow so that we have a percentage increase on commerce nothing unfortunately so we will need to build something else there but i'm going to wait now i really don't want to spend so much while we are in a war so let's wait on that um quite a lot of my provinces actually want something right now and we can look for the henai here right that is my food production um area so perhaps there's something where we can boost our food income now we can't do that here in Yan men our latest accomplishment there's nothing there. Yeah, we do have a food problem right now. Minus two. So I should hurry up with taking the livestock farm there. So I'm going to wait one more turn. And then I'm going to take the livestock farm. For that um, food that we need there. Okay, this is not our concern. Sangyan, there it is. He's taking something there, but not from us. And they're actually trying um, to come out there. And it's a decisive victory, so I'm not doing that again. Let's have a delegation. And we won decisively. We get the livestock and some 200 coins there. Um, and let's say 13% replenishment for the army. Very nice. Um, one of my generals died, though. So this one here strategist as far as I can see that yep so we need another one for that 
We done. I mean, he died, right? Yeah. Why do I get a new one then? Let's take him. Wisdom guide. And replace another one. This character died, so I just did that. There is cunning in caution. Oh no, my spy killed. I uh, was killed in Dugon. Both of them, because there was a faction, perhaps? Faction change? Succession? Um, attack reinforcement, a siege progresses, but our assaulting forces grow wary and supplies run low. Where is that? Oh, it's the livestock farm, right? We are not calling reinforcements for now because I don't think that's necessary. Oh, those channels died of natural causes. So because they're too old. Yeah, but he's going to take the livestock farm now. That's uh, very decisive because there are only 15 troops left. Let feasting commence. Right, so that's that because they would have run out of supplies now in winter. Let's this occupy this. And this should also do something with our food, but it's winter so we produce less For food order. there. But since it's livestock, yeah, it gives us plus three there at least. That's something. Okay, he's coming now close to my iron mine with a rather small army. Nevertheless, we should um, react to that, of course. And it's probably his only army. No, he's got another one there. Okay, but let's move our army over there. Back again to the iron mine. So he's going to take the iron mine, but I'm going to take it right back. And we also have a very unhappy general here. This one. Let's promote him. Oh, there's still another one that's angry. No. Okay. Let's go this way with both our armies and also with this one here. That shouldn't be a big problem there. Right, so we are growing a bit. We are going to lose on the iron mine soon now, but we are just taking it back. You know, he's got small, two smaller armies here. That's it. They can't do that against my full stack. And let's also re, um, replenish here our troops with an, uh, two more melee fighters. Very nice. Nothing there I want to do right now. We do have, yeah, we do have two empty spy positions again um, that we could choose against Yang Shi. So it's a new one here now, as we can see. And wait a second. Liu Bei used the chaos there and took his um, took the salt mine there. Very smart. Very smart move. And I got like three smaller kingdoms now here that I need to do something about. Provinces, you know, th areas in my empire. I need to kind of come together in the middle here. That is Liu Bei though, so um, we're going to do something about him as well. Probably just some trading of the territory. Okay, that's it for now. We have taken two provinces there and we're going to defeat his final army now in the next episode. Stay tuned.